alter ego of Dr. David Banner, the Hulk, the other side of the coin, the raging soul of an otherwise peaceful man, the incredible Hulk, huge, powerful, unthinking, destructive, wanted for murder. David Bruce Banner, gentle physician and healer, now a fugitive from himself, living in the shadow of the monster within, forever fearful of its next outburst of violence, desperate in his search for an answer, a cure. There's got to be a way. I can't go on like this, a prisoner of my own emotions. For it is anger which triggers the altered molecular mechanism within his body that turns the gentle physician into a rampaging monster. I can't go on forever wondering if there's a killer within me, never knowing where or when he might emerge, forever hiding my true identity. David Bruce Banner, calling himself David Benson, man on the run, on the road to everywhere, searching, always searching. Okay, Benson. This is as far as I go. Oh, thanks a lot. Johnville, huh? Coal mining town. Ain't much to look at, but you might find a job here. Well, thanks again. Mr. Jason? Uh, that's me. Somebody said you had a job opening. Yeah, the payroll department. Uh, could use someone. Well, my name's uh, Benson. David Benson. This is my daughter, Betty. Hi. How do you do? And this is Keith Moore, our general manager. You'll be working for him if you qualify. Mr. Moore? You had any experience in accounting, uh, Benson? No, not exactly, but I, I've got a college degree. What field? Uh, chemistry. That doesn't mean you can figure payroll. <laughs> Keith, darling, if Mr. Benson knows chemistry, I'm sure he's good with figures. The job's temporary. Well, that's okay with me. All right. What do you say, Keith? It's your coal mine. You're on, Benson. Keith will show you around and what to do. <laughs> Keith? Yeah, Benson? Well, I was looking through this ledger and... Give me that book. I was just going to point out that These you... aren't the accounts you're supposed to be working on. Well, there seems to be some discrepancy I between said the... these books aren't part of your job. Do I make myself clear? Okay. Sorry, but I'm uptight today. Just get back on these payroll forms, will you? Sure. Lunch, Keith? Not now, Betty. I think I'll work through. How about you, David? Uh, yeah, sure. That sounds good, Miss Jason. The name's Betty. Come on, I'll show you the great little drab town of Johnville. So that about sums it up. Car was on fire. I was able to escape, but my my wife was trapped. I, I couldn't get her out. She died. I'm sorry, David. Ever since that day, I've thought... I thought if only I had that... That superhuman strength, that surge of untapped energy that comes in time of crisis, if I'd had that, I might have saved her. Don't torture yourself, David. Nobody has that kind of brute strength. To be able to turn over a flaming automobile with his bare hands. Some do. Name one. The Hulk. Who? I, I, don't, I don't know. What else did I say? Hulk? The bulk? Something like that. Oh, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know why I said that. I... I can't remember. David, are you all right? Huh? Oh, sure, sure, honey. I'm, I'm fine. Don't mind me. Sometimes I, I get absent-minded, like the proverbial professor. Well, let's order, shall we? For David Bruce Banner, the Hulk is a shadow. A dark, forbidding shape existing deep in his mind. He is aware but cannot remember. He suspects but cannot prove. He lives in constant fear of this unknown being within him. The Hulk. The horrible result of David Banner's experiments with gamma rays when he tried to find superhuman strength. Now that he possesses it, it has become a nightmare. What about you, Betty? Very simple, very fast. I'm the daughter of a coal miner. A nice guy, my father, but not very successful. So I help him with the mine. And here I am, stranded in drab little Johnville. How's the mine doing? Not very well. Losing money? No matter how much coal we mine, the profits never seem to go up. Dad's even thinking of closing down. Why, David? Well, nothing. Just, just wondered, that's all. What do you want, Benson? Look, I haven't said anything to Betty or to Mr. Jason. What are you talking about? The other ledger. 
The double set of books. Are you out of your mind? Moore, I'm not an accountant, but even a kid could figure that you're bilking the mind, stealing the Jasons blind. You are bonkers. Am I? Betty's a nice girl, thinking about marrying you. The old man looks on you like a son. So? Maybe you have time to save yourself, Keith. How would I go about that? Restitution. Put the money back. They never know. I was doing it for their own good, you know. Come on, Keith. I'm not kidding, Benson. The least you can do is hear me out. All right, I'm listening. Jason's an old man. He's lost his touch, doesn't care anymore. Betty never knew much about mining anyway. Wasn't interested. There's an old section of the mine, tunneled by Jason's grandfather before the turn of the century. It's full of high-grade anthracite. I've been putting the money there, improving it. I know it'll pay off. Why haven't you told them? They were against it from the start. They think it's mined out, but I know it isn't. Will all this expense show up in the books? Sure. Better than that, let me show you the mine. But... Where do you see that coal? Pure anthracite. Come on. It's only a little way. About a mile out. Over here, Benson. I thought you said you were improving this place. That's what I said. Yeah, these support timbers, they're rotted. Not up ahead. You've been repairing from the inside out? That's where the anthracite is. Wouldn't it be safer to reconstruct from the mine entrance? The overhead beams aren't that bad. They'll hold. Come on, you have to see this. Black gold. More? More? More, where are you? Over here! The lights went out. I know! You got a flashlight? Of course! I, I can't see it, More. Where? Over here. Just follow me. I can't see you, more. <laughs> Over here, Banner. See? Over here. More, cut the kidding. Just follow me. Five Piper, right? More. More, where are you? Turn on your light. More. I know this mine like the back of my own hand, Benson. I don't need a light. <laughs> Just follow my footsteps. More. You're right, Benson. These overheads are pretty weak. I think if I kick one, like this... Why, I think the whole place might cave in. <laughs> Where are you, Benson? Where are you now? Behind these rocks. What have you done? You've trapped me. <laughs> More! <laughs> You didn't really think there was any coal left in this old shaft, did you? <laughs> the Jasons are stupid people, Benson. Trusting people. Pretty soon they'll learn their lesson. When they're broke and I own the mine. You're gonna leave me here? You got it. Nobody will ever know. This mine hasn't had a foot set in it in over 50 years. Enjoy yourself, Benson. Find some coal while you're waiting. If you can find any. <laughs> David Bruce Banner, trapped in a remote coal mine, sealed in a natural tomb, the air becoming close, stifling, the underground waters rising. But within the peaceful man, the rampaging monster breaks his bonds. Ice-cold anger turns to raging fury. And from the blazing fury there emerges the Hulk. Huge, massive, a towering juggernaut, the Hulk strikes out at everything around him. Walls crumble, timbers snap, crack, great boulders are thrown like small pebbles as the Hulk rampages through the mine. Charging through the tunnels like a roaring tank, the Hulk overtakes Keith Moore. No! No! Get away! What are you? No! 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 Passing more, the Hulk makes for the mine entrance, destroying everything in his path. Timbers fall behind him. Great rocks crash to the ground. Ceilings cave in. Reaching the mine entrance, the Hulk staggers into the sunlight, breathing air in great gulps. And then, skulks 
away into the hills. They find him yet? Yeah, way down the shaft, out of his head, raving about some monster. I'm sorry, Mr. Jason. He was like a son to you, wasn't he? Oh, sort of, yeah. I knew him a long time. Can't figure out what he was doing down in that old shaft. We had it closed as unsafe. He say anything to you about going in there, David? He did mention something about reopening it. The anthracite there, he said. After that, I, I don't remember. Well, he was wrong about that. That was mined out years ago. They say it was the Hulk that caused the collapse. The Hulk? Some kind of monster. People dream up the weirdest things. You're welcome to stay on, Benson. I'll be needing a new manager, and you seem to know your onions. I, uh, that, that's, that's nice of you, Mr. Jason, but I, I think I'll be moving on. Where to, David? I don't know. Anywhere, everywhere. I, I can't seem to stay in one place very long. Well, suit yourself. Excuse me. Hey, Charlie, you see you a minute? What are you looking for, David? Huh? What are you after? What are you searching for? I... I don't know, Betty. Myself, maybe, or... Or peace. I don't know. summer day at Stewart's Bay, a small fishing village. David Banner stands at the end of a dock, breathing fresh sea air. Morning. Great day. Let's hope it holds. Going out? Yeah, that's my baby, Bosun 3. Nice boat. You new around here? Yes. Working? Not yet, I... Uh... Good. Huh? My second mate's laid up in the hospital. Why don't you sign on for a couple of weeks? Oh, I don't know very much about fishing. You got muscle, you can haul a net, crack a winch. Oh, sure, but I... Okay, uh... that's all that's needed. My name's Steve Jager. David Benson. Come aboard. This is my first mate. Hi. A pleasure, uh, Ms. Uh... Mrs. I'm Judy Jager. How do you want your eggs? Once over or sunny side? Uh, any way at all. Once over and three for me. Come on, Dave, I'll show you around. We'll be drawing up our nets later on. This winch... How's the fishing been on the whole? Not too good. Between the foreign fleets and the pollution, I think Stewart's Bay has added. But the new 200-mile limit should... <laughs> Don't believe everything you read, Dave. They're still coming in. Well, that's poaching. That's what they call it. The pollution's worse, though. Plus a few other things. What? Stick around for a while. You'll find out. Those are the nets up ahead. Oh, my God. The legs have been cut. It's him again, Steve. This is it, Judy. I'm going to beat his brains in. What good would that do? Anyway, you might get your own beat in first. He's a lot bigger than you. What we need is proof, evidence, something to take him to court on. What's this all about? Who, who cut your nets? Jack Mayo. Mayo? We'll tell you all about it later. The catch is gone. Might as well head in. Mayo was after me for years. Thought he was going to marry me. <laughs> Fat chance. When I married Steve, Mayo started carrying the torch. It turned into a blazing fire. You think he's responsible for the nets? More than that. Poaching our catch, coming across our lines when we trawl, sabotaging our engine at night. But you can't prove it. Not the sneaky stuff. And when he cuts over our lines, he laughs and says it was an accident. Look, it's Mayo. Watch it, Steve. He's trying to swamp us. Almost did it. Another few feet and we'd be over. <coughs> Likeable sort, isn't he? <laughs> that his boat? Yellowtail. Fastest sports fisherman in the harbor. He owns it with Freddie Fuller. Judy, this is it. I'm gonna beat up on that guy. Over my dead body, you will. You think I want a dead husband? Later, at the dock. Dave, you seen Steve? No. I can't find him any place. I just hope he didn't lose his head and go after Jack Mayo. Where would he look for Mayo? He hangs out at the sea shanty. I'll check it out. <laughs> I'll repay. 
Uh, just a coat, please. Uh, has uh, Steve Jaeger been here? I haven't seen him. <laughs> Who's looking for him? I am. Who's you? The name's Benson. And uh, you're Mayo. He knows my name, Freddy. I've seen him before. Yeah. Ain't we seen you before? Earlier today. I was aboard Bosun 3 when you tried to swamp us. <laughs> Listen to that, Freddy. Swamp them. I don't think it's very funny, Mayo. I do. <laughs> It was an accident, Benson. Yeah, yeah, an accident. <laughs> like your net lines. What net lines? You cut them. Can you prove it? No, but... You looking to fight, mister? Take it easy, Jack. Yeah, why don't you cool it, Mayo? Lay off on Steve and Judy. They're just trying to make a living just like you. You lost the girl, take it like a man. You are it... looking for a fight, ain't you? I told you no, I don't want to fight. And I don't lose my temper easily. I'm only I trying... I do! I lose my temper when somebody tells me what to do, how to live. Nobody minds my business but myself. Cool it, will you, Jack? There's people in Shut here. up! You get out of here, Benson. Do what he says, will you? I can see I'm not welcome. No, you ain't. And one more thing, Benson. If I ever see you again, I'll make sure your flag flies at half-mast. I can't figure out what's wrong with him. More of Jack Mayo's work, if you ask me. Well, the alarm was set last night. He knows how to get around the ship's alarm. Why don't we leave it for a while, Steve? I'm starved. Okay. Want to join us at the diner, Dave? Oh, no, thanks. I'd uh, like to monkey with the engine for a while. I, I think the timing's off. Think you can fix it? Well, I'm pretty good with mechanical things. Okay, join us later. Fine. Uh, listen, uh, can I take her out for a test run? It might also be the fuel line. Can you cast off and dock her alone? Sure. Okay, you get your sea legs. Come on, Judy. Sounds okay so far. Maybe it... Hmm, what now? It's gotta be the fuel line. It's gotta be. Boat coming this way. Uh oh, it's Mayo. How you doing, Olson? <laughs> he almost swamped me, Mayo. He's coming back straight at me. <laughs> this be my inches. You're trying to sink me, Mayo. Benson, next time I see you, I'm gonna fly you at half man! <laughs> Mayo, what are you doing? Looks like Boson's gonna need a new running light, Freddy. <laughs> how about that radar antenna? Yeah, how about that? Have you gone crazy, Mayo? Hey, Freddy, maybe if I put some shots into the hull, she'll sink. Boats with holes usually do. <laughs> You can't do this, Mayo. The Jagers are good people. You can't destroy their boat. I told you I'm gonna fly you in half mad. Hey, where is he? I saw him dive into the water. Maybe he'll drown. You know, just an accident. <laughs> As the enraged David Banner dives into the sea and sinks into the blue-green depths, his features contort change, take on the aspect of utter fury and rage. His muscles bulge, his chest expands, his sinews contract in a great effort, and he zooms to the surface like a great angry shark, exploding into the air in a burst of wrath and vengeance. What the devil's that? I don't know. Let's get out of here. Knifing through the water like some great monster from the deep, the raging giant swims toward Yellowtail. Pull it! Get the shark rifle! I can't find it! Well, look under the forward hatch and hurry up! I don't know what this thing is, but we gotta kill it! The screaming thing comes nearer, eyes full of fury, hate in its soul. The Hulk! <laughs> Coming up from beneath Yellowtail's hull, the Hulk tears at the wood plank, flips the key, and then curls it into the air. Turning, the Hulk sinks into the sea, where in the silent depths he again becomes David Banner, man of no memory, unaware, unknowing of what he has done. Slowly, Banner rises to the surface and swims to the Boson Three. Ah! 
And what did they say it was? Some kind of sea monster. <laughs> Imagine that. The Stewart's Bay monster, like Loch Ness, huh? If you ask me, both Mayo and Fuller were seeing things. Maybe, but they're both changed men. I can swear to that. Meek. I never saw two guys so meek. Maybe there is a monster out there. There are monsters everywhere. Monsters of the soul. Huh? Nothing. Just, just a thought. Vortex of wild, uncontrolled destruction. Imprisoned in a cell, the Hulk tears at the steel bars. They twist, bend, break. Once again, the dark, destructive monster that lives within David Bruce Banner has been unleashed. The Hulk. It begins in the rural village of Pine Nut, a small dot on the map. But for Dr. David Banner, traveling under the name David Benson, it is the beginning of a nightmare. (laughs) And I hear the opposition's running on the promise of putting the chicken in every pot. Well, let me tell you, them fellas got their fingers so deep in the pork barrel, them chickens is going to oink all the way to the table. Now, I ain't gonna tell you what I'm running for. I'll tell you what I'm against. Corruption in government. (laughs) The opposition is full of promises. I don't make promises. None that I don't keep, anyhow. What's going on? Bob Hyatt is running for mayor. That cuss ought to be run out of town. He's just fine for my money. Well, you spend your money the way you want. Me, I'm on the other side. And I say it's time the town of Pine Knot got a fair shake. And that's the platform I'm running on. A fair shake. A fair shake for Pine Knot and its citizens. No more raiding the treasury, spending foolishly, allowing gambling... Someone shot Hyatt. There he is. Down, man, down. Across the street, I see him. Duck down. You want to get shot? Get that assassin. There he is. In the alley. He went down the alley. You went up that alley, Chief. Simpson, get around and seal that alley from the other side. Come on, Maleska. There he is, Chief. Shoot to kill, Maleska. He's got his hands up, Chief. Take it easy. All right, you. No need to shoot me, officer. I was just... Don't you be telling me what not to do, man. Just walk forward and keep them hands high. I saw the man, the assailant. Shut he... your mouth. But I was chasing him. I he... told you, shut your mouth. Fan him, Maleska. He's clean. Cuff him. No, wait. I'm not the one you're looking for. Shut your mouth, boy. You're making a mistake, officer. The man you want is getting away. He's about 5'7". He wears Get him gr- in the car! Now look, my name is Benson. I just got here from... I ask you to shut your mouth, boy. You gonna do it? Once more, Benson, where's the weapon? I told you I never had a weapon. The guy with the gun ran up that alley and I followed him. Why don't you cooperate? I am cooperating. If anything, I'm trying to make your job easier. I Shut ju- your mouth, boy. Where are you from? I came in from Rutherford, upstate. How? I hitched. Hitchhiker. Well, ain't that dandy. How much money you got? A few dollars. Two dollars and sixty-five cents, chief. Uh-huh. You born in Rutherford? No. What was you doing there? That was as far as the last ride I had was going. You ain't even from this state, are you? No. 
You're a vagrant. I'm not a vagrant. I'm just down on my luck. You're a I... hitchhiker, vagrant, and a killer. Who paid you to shoot Bob Hyatt? Nobody. I told you I saw the guy who shot him. Yeah? What's his name? How right. should I know? I just got into town. What's he look like, Benson? The assassin. About 5'7", 150, 60 pounds. He wears an eye patch. Shut he... your mouth! But I, I... Shut your mouth, boy! I don't want to listen to no lies. Got to sign a confession? I didn't think this could happen in the United States. What? You ever hear of Miranda? Miranda? <laughs> listen to that Maliska Miranda. <laughs> Miranda who? You know what I'm talking about. You know my rights as well as I do. You were supposed to read me those rights. You are supposed to let me make one telephone call. You were supposed to provide me with a lawyer if I can't afford one of my own. Is that right? Now, is that what I'm supposed to do, boy? Well, ain't that something? You'll get a taste of Dumphy before he gets Miranda. Lock him in the cooler, Maliska. All the comforts of home, Benson. Aren't you going to take these handcuffs off? Chief says no. Look, why don't you cooperate? You must be kidding. All right, get in. You know what the Dumphy treatment is? I can guess. You're up against Jim Dumphy, one of the hardest cops in the state. They call him Bull. He don't get that name for nothing, and he won't stop at nothing to get a confession. What am I supposed to confess? That I wear an eye patch and walk with a limp? The man you say you saw walk with a limp? I was about to tell you that before Big Chief Standing Bull shut my mouth. Why? Nothing. Only but a few minor changes you could be describing Floyd Elder. Who's he? Floyd Elder practically runs Pie Knot. The gambling, the liquor, all the corruption. Only thing is, him and Chief Dumphy is best friends. I'm beginning to get the picture. Listen, Maleska, you've got to help me make a phone call. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Meanwhile, why don't you cooperate? Hyatt ain't dead, only wounded. Now, wait. If you plead guilty, I figure you'll get off at 25 years. Chance for parole in 10. 25 years for what? For telling the truth. You don't believe me either. I ain't heard the jury verdict yet, but I know Dumphy. See ya, boy. M Maleska, that, that phone call. I'll see what I can do, but it'll take time. Why? I gotta wait till Dumphy goes home, if he ever does. Do I get that phone call, Maleska? Get me, boy. Dumphy. Not Maleska, not Miranda. Mind if I come in? I got a confession here, boy. You gonna sign it? Of course not. It ain't long. Listen to Paige. Now I'm gonna take them cuffs off so you can write. Now you just sign right there on the dotted line, boy. Dunphy, you must be crazy. Watch your mouth, boy. Now sign. No. <coughs> sign. No. Sign that damn <coughs> confession, boy. <coughs> All right, that's we want it. Dunphy. <coughs> Dunphy. When I get out of here, I'm going to... <coughs> How are you going to get out of here, boy? I got the key. I, I want a lawyer, a phone. Yeah, you said that before. Uh, uh, Maleska, Maleska, that you, Maleska? I sent him home long ago. Hello, Jim. How you all, Floyd? Elder. This the fellow you seen shoot Bob Hyatt, Floyd? That's him. You were in it together. If I hadn't shown up, you would have accused somebody else. You came in right handy, boy. Now you just sign. You know, I won't sign. You want some more dumpy treatment? You're making a big mistake. Tell you what I'm gonna do, boy. I'm gonna leave you here a little bit. And when I come back, either you sign this here confession or you got more or you know what. See you, boy. Come on, Floyd.
Left alone in the cell, pushed to the edge of human endurance, David Banner seized with anger over the injustice of his imprisonment and the brutality of a man unfit to wear the badge of law and order. The rage rises, and from the dark, unreasoning chasm of his soul, the Hulk emerges, a wild vortex of uncontrolled destruction, tearing at the prison bars, twisting them, bending them, breaking... <laughs> Blind in his rage, the Hulk tears the prison to pieces, obliterating everything in his path. The primitive has been unleashed, and there is no escape for the terrified Dumpy and Elder. Elder made a full confession? I never saw a man so scared in my life. Just all spilled out of him. A whole story about him and Chief Dumpy, and what they try to pull on you. Dunphy in the hospital? Yeah, he ain't hurt too much, physically. It's his head, you know. He goes babbling on about this big monster. Clear out of his mind, they say. Well, what monster? Uh, some kind of Hulk, he says it was. He's crazy. There was nobody else in that jail. I know it. This here's the town line, Banner. The bus ought to be along in 10, 15 minutes. Thanks, Maluska. Where are you going? I don't know. You ain't got much money. I'll get by. Here's a ten. Take the bus. I don't recommend hitchhiking in these parts. Well, you don't have to. Go on, take it. Anyway, it sure don't make up for what you went through in Pine Knot. Take it. Thanks, Maluska. Good luck, man. Thanks. David Banner, fugitive from himself, seeking an answer, searching for a cure, on the road to nowhere and everywhere. began in a railroad station in the Midwest. David Banner, man on the run, and Margaret Lamb, a young girl seeking a cure for her mysterious ailment. How long have you been on the crutches? Almost a year now. You're doing very well. Thanks. Where is the sanitarium you're going to? Tally Falls, about 200 miles upstate. You've been there before? No. I only heard about it a little while ago. It's run by a Dr. Charles. Timothy Charles. He's really great, they say. Really. He can cure just about anything. A faith healer? Oh, no. Nothing like that. He's a real doctor. He uses some kind of new ray. Ray? A radiation machine, like x-rays, only different. It's called a mason ray. Mason ray? Yes. You've heard about it? Uh, no, not exactly. Or not as a cure for anything, or, or as a ray. But I know something about masons. They're like x-rays, right? Well, yes and no. Masons hardly exist, or exist only for a short time in a cyclotron. I never heard of a mason ray, but that's what this Dr. Charles uses? Yes. They say he can cure almost anything. Cancer, arthritis, anything. Look, here's some literature on it. Testimonials? Isn't it marvelous? Yes. Yes. Isn't it? There's my train. Well, let me help you. I can do it all right. Uh, yes, uh, you're handling the crutches very well. The other doctors you've been to, Maggie. Oh, they all say the same thing. What? Nothing, Mr. Benson. Really nothing. I, I got so tired of them. So tired. They gave up? Pretty much. Well, here's the gate. It was nice meeting you, Mr. Benson. And thanks for the coffee. I'll buy you another, and breakfast, on the train. Oh? You're going on the same train? <laughs> yes, didn't I tell you? How far? To Tully Falls, and Dr. Timothy Charles. Living in the shadow of his alter ego, the Incredible Hulk, forever fearful of its next outburst of violence, David Banner is desperate in his search for an answer, a cure, willing to clutch at any small straw and any small hope. 
he accompanies Margaret Lamb to Dr. Charles Sanitarium in Tolly Falls, knowing in his heart that it is probably another blind alley ending at another stone wall. All right, Mr. Benson, that about does it for today. You can get up. These treatments are pretty short, aren't they? The Maison Ray is a highly concentrated form of energy, Mr. Benson. It only requires a very brief exposure. Well, the Maison itself only exists for a split second. Yes, that's right. I want you to take these pills, Mr. Benson, one before each meal and one at bedtime. Cora? Yes, doctor? Any more treatments this afternoon? Miss Lamb. Oh, yes, Margaret Lamb. You can prep her, Cora. Yes, doctor. You have something on your mind, Mr. Banner? A question? It's about Maggie Lamb. We came up on the train together. A lovely girl. Have you diagnosed her condition, Doctor? Yes, of course. Why? Well, from what she told me, it could quite possibly be muscular dystrophy. Is that right? I was just wondering. I, I don't recall hearing that radiation of any kind could be effective in such cases. Mr. Benson, are you a doctor? I was only trying to... Uh, I asked, out. are you a doctor? No. Yet, you come in here... You talk about Masons as though you know all about them. You diagnose muscular dystrophy in a patient on a train without any examination. You question my ethics. I wasn't questioning your ethics. Then I question yours. And I question your qualifications to make a diagnosis of anything. You came here because, as you describe it, you suffer periods of agitated depression. Is that right, Mr. Benson? Yes. And have you suffered any of these depressed periods since you've been here? No. Then suppose you just relax and take your treatments. And let me be the doctor, huh? <laughs> Did you have a treatment today, Mr. Benson? Uh, yes. Uh, and you, Maggie? That machine is really weird, isn't it? I'd say that. But I feel so much better already. I know it will work. I just know it. Uh, Maggie, sometimes we can let hope run too far ahead of us. I'll be walking again soon. Dr. Charles thinks so, and his nurse, Cora Howard, says she's seen cases like mine that cleared up within weeks, just weeks. You really believe, don't you, Maggie? I know this is the place, Mr. Benson. I just know it this time. I can feel it. Realizing that the pills Charles has given him are drugs designed to keep his mind and senses dulled, David Banner puts them aside and spends his nights thinking, thinking of Maggie Lamb and her hopes of walking, thinking of the other patients and their dream. Rising from his bed, he makes his way down the stairs to Timothy Charles' laboratory, determined to get at the truth of the Mason Ray machine. Approaching the laboratory, Banner hears voices. He listens closely. What about McGarry? He says he can't afford much more. One more treatment, then out. Right. This Benson, he concerns me. I'm not sure of his ability to pay. Just as well. He's a snoop anyway. One more dose of the old razzmatazz and he's cured. <laughs> Keep talking, Cora. I think we've got company. Amazing how that machine cures people. There's Maggie Lamb. We've got a good one there. Oh? The family's loaded. They sent her every place. Money's no object. <laughs> it is for us. What do you think's wrong with her anyway? How should I know? I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Benson. Dr. Benson. I might have suspected. <laughs> Come in, Dr. Benson. Come in and sit down. Cora and I were having tea. Would you like some tea? Why not? Some tea for Dr. Benson, Cora. Coming up. And what diagnosis have you arrived at tonight, Dr. Benson? The Mason Ray machine, for one. Oh, and what conclusions have you come to? That it's a simple ultraviolet ray machine, which can be dangerous in itself. True. <laughs> Any kind of radiation in large quantities can be dangerous. And that it's combined with diathermy, a lot of phony lighting effects and crazy sounds. In short, you're calling me a quack. <laughs> exactly. Here's your tea. Thanks. Tell me, Dr. Benson, are you from the Ethical Practices Committee? No, I... I actually came here out of hope. To cure your depression? Yes. And what do I find? Just another charlatan, bilking unsuspecting people out of their life savings, offering them hope and giving them nothing. And I suspect you intend to go to the Ethical Practices Committee. 
I'll see to it that they... The what? Uh, what, what, what did you put in that, that tea? <laughs> A rather strong sedative, Benson. But it won't last long. Don't worry about it. I, I can't move. Uh, uh. Help me get him on the table, Cora. He's heavier than he looks. What's going on? Use the restraining straps. Tie him down. Tight. He won't get out. Charles, Charles, what, what are you doing? We're giving you another treatment, Dr. Benson. Your very last. After that, you'll be cured. <laughs> Charles, let me up. Ah, uh, Dr. Benson, you're awake? What are you doing? As you said before, ultraviolet radiation can be dangerous in large doses. It can burn a man to a crisp, can't it? <laughs> you're not going to. This will be your last treatment, Dr. Benson. <laughs> Your very last. After this, you'll never feel pain again. Any kind of pain. <laughs> You're insane. Just you burn me alive. It will be recorded as an unfortunate accident. Cora, five degrees more. The UV intensity? And the heat intensity. Charles, don't. Why not? Ah. Dr. Benson, all in the cause of science, huh? <laughs> <laughs> His fists clench, his chest expands, his wrists enlarge, the rage within him erupts like lava from a suddenly active volcano, and he becomes the Hulk. patients are out safely. And Dr. Charles? I'm afraid he was trapped, Maggie, uh, along with the nurse. Oh, oh, he, was, he was such a good man, Mr. Benson. Such a good man. Yes. And such a nice man. I know he had the cure. I know it. There are other doctors, Maggie, and I'll make sure you get to a good one. I promise you that. I promise it.